Hey, beautiful souls. In this video, I want to talk about the midlife awakening, perimenopause, or the lead up to menopause itself. Essentially, menopause is over pathologized in our society. It's framed as a medical problem that needs to be fixed. Menopause is not a medical problem. It's not something that's gone wrong. It's a life stage and it is a powerful one. Now, none of this is to say that some women won't benefit from medical support, hormone replacement and so on. Of course they will. But needing support for symptoms doesn't mean something's gone wrong. In the same way that needing some ibuprofen, some raspberry leaf tea in a hot water bottle when we're menstruating doesn't mean that the process shouldn't be happening. Why do we even have menopause? As far as we know, the only creatures that have menopause are some great apes, including humans, and some species of whale. And if you think about it, it could only have evolved as a trait if there was some advantage in having it to the group as a whole. So essentially, what menopause is proving is that in earlier societies, older women were so valuable to the group as a source of wisdom, experience and knowledge that it was better to have them stop having children and not risk them in childbirth so that they would be around to share all their knowledge with the group. So menopause is nature's way of affirming the incredible value of older women to the community. And yet Western society with its culture of worshiping youth, with its ageism, frames this transition purely as a loss, a loss of fertility, but we're also told a loss of attractiveness or relevance or even of value. But in reality, it's not a loss, it's a portal. It's a huge transitional portal that invites us to step into a new role in our lives, in our communities. So from the full outward expression of creativity that is the creatrix stage, age about 25 to 45, in which we had our focus on outward things, on other people, maybe children, maybe career, maybe projects, we are invited to start to turn our gaze slightly more inward as we step into this new phase, 45 to 65, that some call the magician, some the queen, some the enchantress, some the healer. If we look at the four seasons of a woman's life, this is autumn. It's the equivalent of that time just before menstruation in our smaller moon cycle. And just like autumn, it's a season of harvest and gratitude. Maybe you're reaping the rewards of having become senior in your profession, or maybe your children are nearly grown and the focus of that job is changing, although it never ends. It's a time when you can reap the rewards of all the hard work you put in in the earlier years. But it's also a time of letting go, of change, of beginning to turn our focus slightly more towards our internal reality in preparation for winter and our later years after 65 as wise women. So like autumn, it's a time of reflection. How do we want to spend the second half of our lives? What do we need to release and let go of? Have our values shifted since we were younger? And does our life need to reflect that? Many women choose to change career at this time as their priorities and their values shift. Many can start to become more interested in a spiritual path that really resonates with them. And anything that we haven't previously dealt with in terms of our own healing can come up to be dealt with at this time. So just like with PMS, things that we thought we had successfully repressed can show themselves again. Some women feel a lot of anger, but the hormones and the menopause didn't create the anger it's likely that there's been years of stifled anger because we've tried to keep the peace or be nice or just because it wasn't safe to express anger for whatever reason. And now it's demanding to be felt. It's like a wake up call. What needs addressing? The shift in hormones just gives more conscious access to the, what was already there. Our brains even begin to change. There's lots of scientific evidence to show that there are changes to the temporal lobe, which governs our intuition, which makes sense as we think how much stronger our intuition is becoming during this time. 
and also in the hypothalamus, the amygdala, the hippocampus, areas that deal with emotion, emotional regulation, memory. It's a lot. But if we begin to see the menopause as a powerful life transition rather than just a loss of youth, then it can be something we choose to step into consciously in all of our power, rather than a process that we feel is just happening to us and it feels beyond our control. For example, if there are lots of mood swings and strong emotions, we can ask, what is the underlying need that hasn't been met? What have we been carrying around with us from the past that we haven't dealt with? How can we hold ourselves in love through whatever arises how can we learn to be more compassionate with ourselves and how we feel? If we feel a lot of brain fog, we can be gentle and kind to ourselves around this knowing that our brain is rewiring itself. It doesn't last forever. So can we give ourselves the time and the space for this process to happen? That's a powerful lesson in self-care and prioritizing ourselves Something that most women need in this culture that doesn't really encourage that kind of genuine self-care, self-love. I think of my hot flushes as my phoenix fire. When it happens, I think of all the things that no longer serve me, old beliefs, patterns, stories, habits, just burning away from the inside out so that I can enter the portal with less of whatever isn't useful for me in this second half of my life. So I welcome it in. And ironically, what we don't resist has the opportunity to be released, move through us and doesn't last as long. And this time is also so energetically powerful. All the creative energy that once was released and lost every month with our cycle is now more and more shifting and being retained, recycled within the body. So this means it's available for you to do whatever you want with it to channel and use this incredible, generative, creative energy in any way that suits you. There's a lot of power in that. Practicing visualizing this shift in meditation can be one way to really feel the possibilities and to feel the energies moving within you. So I hope this has given you some different perspectives, maybe some things to think about. If you have questions or you feel like you could benefit from some support around your own midlife portal, please do reach out to me via my website. I really love to hear from you with so much love.